Welcome to the Living Rock Podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard. I'm one of the pastors here, one of the leaders here at Living Rock. And we have a wonderful team of people who've been working really hard to put this event together. And we are here to celebrate Christmas. And we are here to celebrate the arrival of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we're going to sing a couple of songs together. One's a carol, another is a song that we would sing on a Sunday. So if we could stand together, this is our opportunity to sing and worship together. Thank you. No, the, in, genuinely, the word adore is, is a, a wonderful word. And we just sing it in the, the funkiest version of O Come All You Faithful I've heard for a while. But O Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And that's the message this morning. It's about adoring Jesus Christ, the Lord, and why we adore him. And uh, the word adore doesn't actually appear specifically in our Bibles, but its meaning, its sentiment is, is, is filled <laughs> in our Bibles. And the word adore means to love and to venerate, which is a great word, to prize highly, to esteem and to value above all else. So it's a word that speaks of honor, and respect. It's a word that speaks of gratitude and appreciation, and it's a word that really speaks of devotion and worship. And worship fills our Bibles. And the word worship comes from the old English word worth-ship, to ascribe worth or value, to consider something to be of great worth. In fact, oftentimes of greater worth even than ourselves. And I believe that actually all of us as, as human beings, we're wired to worship. There's something in us that desires to be devoted to something or someone greater than ourselves. And that can present in lots of different ways. It could be kings and queens. It could be gods and idols. It could be our heroes or our heroines, those that we really value and, and hold in high regard. And sometimes that can boil down to how we view other people or maybe a celebrity or a football team, or money, or possessions, or our career, or the pursuit of pleasure, whatever it might be, that could become the thing that we, that we really value. And that's a really good question for us to ask. What do I value the most? What's most important to me? What's most valuable to me? And of course, we are told to have a great amount of self-worth and self-value. That's why L'Oréal Paris, because you're worth it. You know, the best products, the best cosmetics, because you're worth it. Uh, apologies to uh, the people in the church who are French, but at least you're in the World Cup final and England isn't, so you can take solace from that. And of course, it's good to have self-value and self-worth, but, but self-worship is very unhealthy. And it's important to consider what it is that's most important to us, because I believe we were created to worship, wired to worship, because we were created and wired to worship God. That's in our spiritual DNA, if you like. And we've just sung it. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And for Christians, we believe that only God himself, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, only God is worthy of worship because only God is greater than us. Did you know this, that you and I, we are the pinnacle of creation? You might not have felt it this morning when you got out of bed. But the Bible tells us we were made in God's image and we are the pinnacle of his creation. So to worship another person or anything that's created is lowering ourselves, debasing ourselves because only God is greater. And so it's right that we worship him. And that's why we gather to worship Jesus together. And Psalm 145 says, Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. It's declaring, God, you are great. And the overflow from that is this. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. I will proclaim your greatness. We will sing about your righteousness. We will speak of your glory. We'll tell of your mighty deeds. Can you see the result of recognizing that God is great? There's an overflow of words that tell, that speak, that proclaim, that declare, that sing. And that's why we gather to worship. And so we're going to sing together. Hark the heralds. If we could stand together. We're going to sing our next carol as an expression of worship to God. And it was great. I was gutted to have missed 
uh, being here on that Sunday because we had different stations throughout the village that told the story of the nativity uh, from beginning with the prophets and then carrying through to the shepherds and the angels and the wise men. And, you know, each of these characters point to Jesus. Each of these individuals literally point to Jesus. Isaiah and Micah, in their prophecy, 700 plus years before Jesus was born, were pointing to the one who would come, who would save mankind, and even predicted where he would be born, in Bethlehem. And the centurion, the wonderful centurion, the decree by Caesar Augustus, to return to their hometowns, directed Mary and Joseph to take this baby that was in Mary's womb to the place where God said he was born. Even the Roman Empire directed and pointed us to where Jesus would be accurately predicted to be born. And then we have Mary and Joseph who were told by Gabriel that Mary would conceive a child and they were to call him Jesus. And the name Jesus literally means the Lord saves. His name means salvation. And his name pointed to who he was. And the angels sang to the shepherds and directed them to a little house in Bethlehem so that they could meet this newborn saviour. And the wise men followed the Old Testament prophecies and followed the star to meet this newborn king. And I really want to focus on the wise men and what they did and what they brought to Jesus and what this means for us as to why we should adore Jesus the gifts that they brought and what that means for us. So we're going to watch um, a video of the story of the wise men coming to meet Jesus told from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 2. Thank you. I'm always intrigued by those visitors from the East. They're very mysterious, these wise men. And we don't know how many there were. We, it's tradition that it says there are three because they brought three gifts, but there were probably more than three men that traveled to to visit Jesus. But each of the gifts that they brought was significant and points to why we should adore him. And the first gift that they brought was the gift of, does anybody know what the first gift was that the wise men brought? Any of the children? What was it? A bottle of bold? Gold. I thought it was for the laundry. Yeah, gold. And of course, gold is a precious metal. It's a metal that represents glory. And it's, it's something that you would give to a king. A king would wear a golden crown and hold a golden scepter, sit on a golden throne, even have gold embroidered into their robes. A king or a queen, it was meant for royalty. And actually, Matthew and Luke trace Jesus' ancestry back. And it, uh, Matthew does it through Joseph, Jesus' adopted father. And Luke does it through Mary, Jesus' mother. And both of their lines go back to a very significant king, in Israel's history, a man called King David, who was the ultimate king of the Jewish kingdom. Because God had said, on your throne, David, will be the greatest king who will ever come in your line. And Jesus had royal blood in his veins. He could trace his line back through his adopted father and through his mum to King David. He was a rightful king. And that's why Herod was threatened. Herod was a vassal king. He had limited power. And all of a sudden, these men turn up and say, where is the king of the Jews? Where has he been born? And Herod says this, go and find out to his other advisors, where is this Messiah, this Christ? You know, Jesus is called Jesus Christ. And Christ is a title. And it means this, Messiah. And it means this, anointed one. You know, to be a king or to be a queen, even now, they are anointed. At a coronation, when King Charles is coronated in May, he will be anointed as the king of the United Kingdom. And Jesus himself is the anointed one. He has the right to be king. He has been anointed as the Christ. He is the one who is from the line of David, the ultimate king. And here's the amazing thing. Whether these were wise men, whether they were three kings from the Orient, Whatever they were, they were not Jewish, but they came and they worshipped Jesus as their king. And they brought with them gold to show that he truly was and truly is a king. What a unique king. Born in a little house. Born laid in a feeding trough in Bethlehem. And yet angels announce his birth and these men travel, astrologers, scientists, come noblemen to worship at his feet. The gold represents his kingship, that he's the Christ. And the second gift that they brought was 
gold and Frankenstein. Yes, that's right. Frankincense, Elijah. Well done. That's excellent knowledge. What is frankincense? There's a clue in the name, and it's not Frank. It's incense. It was a special incense that was from tree resin that was burned, and it was specially burned during times of prayer and devotion and worship. It represented something that you would do because it was a pleasant perfume, a fragrance that you would light so that when the smell kind of went up into the heavens, it would please the nostrils of the God that you were calling on and praying to so that they would look at you favorably. It represents divinity. It represents uh, an appeal to God. And here's the thing, they were recognizing not only was Jesus a king, a royal ruler, but also that he was a divine deity that their gift was for a God. Jesus is the Son of God. Not only is he Christ, the anointed one, he is Lord. We sing it, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. He's God. He's divine. And the third gift that they brought was myrrh. You have to roll the R's. Myrrh. Very good. And myrrh was also a perfume and a fragrant um, resin and actually weight for weight was probably more valuable than gold in those days and it has healing properties but not only that it was used to embalm dead bodies because it would stop the bodies from decaying after death can we see what this represented that he would heal but also that he would die why because Jesus came as a man he came as a human man Prior to this, he was the eternal son of God. He was the light of the world. He was the word and now made flesh and given a name. His name will be Jesus. Do you know he wasn't called Jesus until then? But when he was born as a baby, God made flesh. He became a man and was called Jesus. He's the king. He's Christ. He's God. He's Lord. And he became human. He's Jesus. Why? He came to die for us. In John's gospel, it says this, after they took Jesus' body down from the cross, they wrapped him in cloth that was anointed with myrrh. The gift that the wise men brought at the beginning of his earthly life was there at the end of his earthly life, before his resurrection, but it showed that he had come to relate to us and die for us as our sacrificial saviour. And that's why we adore him. So we've got our next presentation song from our wonderful musicians and choir. You know, he's a royal ruler. He received the gift of gold. Has anybody here met the queen? Give me a wave if anybody here has met the queen. Pete, I knew Pete Foster would have been one of them. Yeah, met the queen. You know, when there, there was hugely significant, wasn't it, when Queen Elizabeth II passed away this year, the impact that had on the nation because of the respect in which she was held by the nation and far beyond. And I'll never forget when Prince Charles came to Merthyr Tidville, which is where I'm from, in the 80s. It was in black and white, but it was still a little bit behind the times in Merthyr. And the whole town, it felt like the whole town came out just to catch a glimpse of Prince Charles. It was an excitement because royalty was in the area. Royalty had visited the town. And you know, when we gather to worship as a church, we gather around our king, Jesus. And that's why there's a buzz. That's why... There's an excitement because we want to see him together. We want to honor him together. We want to cheer for him together because he's our king, which is represented by the gold. He's Christ. But also, as we've said, he's the Lord. He's divine deity. He's God, which means he's eternal. It means he's seen what's gone before and he knows what's ahead, that he's all seeing, all knowing, all powerful, totally loving, totally good. And Jesus says this about himself, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's not just an earthly king, he's also God. And he knows, and he knows what's best for us, which is why it's important that we understand his authority and his glory. And those two things for me in my life have meant that I've chosen to make him Lord of my life, to submit to him, to trust him, to follow him. But not only does he know everything, he also knows what it's like to be you and what it's like to be me. Emmanuel, God with us. He's Jesus. He's not just Christ the Lord. He's Jesus. And here's the thing. Jesus experienced joy and sadness, friendship and betrayal, 
rest and tiredness, life and even death. He experienced those things and he knows what it's like to be human. And I find that incredibly comforting and incredibly powerful. That God was willing to come to us. Jesus Christ the Lord. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of following him. And I just want to say here today, whether you know Jesus, you believe in him or not, as, as just a man, he was more than just a man. Or a king, he's more than just a king. He's also God made flesh. Jesus Christ the Lord. He'd be worthy of adoration if he was just a king. He'd be worthy of adoration if he was just God. He'd be worthy of adoration if he was somebody who'd lay down his life so others could live. But here's the amazing thing. He's all of those things. And that's why we worship him. I just would like to make an invitation to you today that if you don't know Jesus in that way, but you would like to talk more to us, I would love to be involved in that conversation to help you find out more about who Jesus is. Thanks for joining us today. Search for us online and get information about upcoming events and more great teaching.